Dave Nettig, and Alderman Jerry Wisbisky and our fine staff. Um, first entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of August 12, 2005. 15. So to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pros? Okay, that passes. Uh, adoption of the agenda. Well, to approve as presented. Uh, I'd like to move up number three, if that's okay with the committee. Sure. Uh, move it up to where? Uh, right in front, I guess. Huh? I think that there are here people here probably for the first and second items. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, wait, I'll wait for him. Yeah, you might want to wait. Well, then we'll leave where it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take Number. Okay, the agenda is approved as it stands. Second. All right. Uh, should we renege? It's up to you guys. Okay, uh, I'd like to make a motion to renege on the agenda. Move item three up to the front. Is that going to be a long discussion? I don't know. Shouldn't be. All right, I'll make that motion to. It's uh, just going to be a pleasant surprise, three. I believe. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes. And we will now take item number three discussion action to accept a $220,000 donation from the stadium district and to apply for a Wisconsin Coastal Management Grant up to $80,000 for a phase one feasibility study and engineering design to restore a sand beach at Bay Beach Amusement Park not to exceed 250000 This is definitely history. So this, this is exciting. All right, staff. Okay, the purpose of this request is to produce funding sources to complete, to complete the phase one feasibility study and complete additional required engineering to restore a beach at Bay Beach Amusement Park. Depending on the level of funding secured, we would like to look at studying things such as the design of the beach, the sand placement, possible filtration system, ADA compliance, accessibility of boardwalks, water quality, the Army Corps of Engineer and DNR permitting, Bay Beach amenities, such as piers, lighting, benches, restrooms, the bathhouse, outdoor showers, parking, stormwater management, walkways, utilities, and any of the maintenance requirements that would be associated with this. What are the funding sources for this? The city is asking for 120,000 donation from the stadium district, which I understand we received. Yes. And so we're good there. The parks department would also like to apply for a Wisconsin Coastal Management Grant to fund the engineering expenses. This application is due November 3rd of 2015. It would be a 60-40 match, and we would use our, our um, the stadium district funds would be our matching funds for that grant. We would request up to $80,000 for in-grant funding. If approved, we'd be looking at about $200, $200,000, I'm sorry, available for the engineering. We don't know the exact cost of what it would take to look at all those areas that I just described to you for the engineering. If additional funds are needed, we would have to go back and look for additional grant opportunities or donations to secure that funding for the additional funding if it would be needed. Any new grant applications would certainly come back to this park committee for approval at that time. <coughs> Patrick Engineering is our current city contract engineer firm. Um, Patrick Engineering is considering subcontracting with Miller and Associates. The project, um, they bring a lot of project expertise and knowledge. They're currently involved in 14 beach restorations throughout the state. All engineering would be funded strictly through stadium board donations and grant donations only. There would be no city, Bay Beach Amusement Park, or Friends of Bay Beach funding associated with this engineering project. Due to this year's delays and increased pricing, those funds are already committed to the projects that we have had approved by this park committee and the city council in the phase one of our Bay Beach master plan. In order to move forward, we would focus on generating that revenue. The Friends of Bay Beach have been working hard to secure funding for three rides, getting the West End train completed, and the completion of the Falling Star, which is on the horizon. When we looked at the possibility of putting a beach at Bay Beach, we always knew that we would need to, a combination of donors and grants to accomplish this. Um, this is our first effort to seek out those additional funding sources to accomplish this goal. If improved, the engineering would be done in phases as funding becomes available. We can only do what we have money to do, so we'd have to do it in phases. If we got all the money right away and we could do it all at once, that'd be great. Um, the plan would be to sit down with the DNR 
get a list of the engineering requirements, set up priorities of the phasing plan to accomplish the, pri the process based on, again, the budget. There, there are also a lot of uh, existing studies that are out there right now on the Bay, and we hope to, to um, try to get a hold of some of those people as well and tap into what resources they may have and partner with them. So what we're asking you to do and, and approve tonight is to accept the stadium donation for $120,000, authorize permission to apply for a Wisconsin, Wisconsin Coastal Management Grant for $80,000. If needed, authorize us to do, proceed with seeking out other grant opportunities for additional funding. And if we get those, report those back to the Park Committee and approve Patrick Engineering to begin an engineering and feasibility study and as funding becomes available, not to exceed $250,000. Okay. Uh, did you have somebody who wanted to really speak on this? Or did, did the mayor want to two in on this? Or? I'm happy to comment. I'm going to take care of the alderman first. And okay. All right. Yes. Um, just, I was just going to ask uh, what the next step would be after this. The next step? Yep. Well, first of all, we would have to meet with the DNR, as I said, and figure out what that process would be, what those priorities would be, what would we need to move forward with the plan? What do they need for us to come forward with the plan? Then get the engineering, uh, Patrick involved, put the engineering phases together, bring back the study, and then bring it back hopefully in March of next year and decide which way we're going to go, depending on what that study shows us. Okay, and then I would imagine that when we do this, we would be presenting our comp plan that we already have for the for Bay Beach. Correct. And then trying to do something in correlation with that, with uh, just so that we're not duplicating work that's already been done. Correct. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Anybody else? Yes, uh, Dave. I was just going to ask: Are we continuing to do monitoring there? Because uh, you know, I know this the study that Bay Lake did. Uh, it, sh it, uh, it didn't. Sh it showed that uh, I believe it was 15 percent of the time, the E. coli levels were higher than what would normally normally be acceptable. Uh, so I, I was was just curious about that. If we're continuing to do monitoring, or if that's part of this, uh, uh, the work that the engineering firm would do. Uh, you know, I just want to be sure that before we proceed that. You know, we're we're sure we're there uh, as far as the quality. Water sampling and looking at the water quality, which is something that we, we continue to do. Okay. For the past three years, as you know, we've been running those studies. We had applied for a grant in 2012 mm -hmm. with Bay Lakes, and they have conducted those grants. What those grants have showed is that our water looked very favorable at this point. Now, we still need to continue to look at that, and hopefully working with the engineering, they would shed some light on this as well. That would be all part of this process okay. of whether or not it's going to be a swimmable beach. You know, we can sustain that. If we look at a filtration system, what impact would that have on the water itself and the beach itself as well? Okay. I would say, uh, as always, uh, with any major beach or any beach areas, uh, there's a constant monitoring of the beaches along Lake Michigan and all over the place. So that would be, an, I'm sure, it would be an ongoing basis. It would be a daily test every yeah. day if we ran yeah. a beach, just like every other beach that's ran in Wisconsin, like the Door County beaches. Some days you can swim there, some days you can't. It would be the same process. It would be monitored by the health department. Okay. Any, any further discussion by the committee? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Mayor, would you like to? Why? Well, sure. Us, please. Yeah. Been a great day so far, right? right. And, and Donnie, uh, the director, really laid out where we're at with this project. Um, you know, like many things, there's just been a lot of work that's been into this. And uh, the stadium board, uh, very supportive from an economic development study standpoint. So, um, as the director said, uh, to before we get too excited, I mean, this is a tough project. We really have to study the infrastructure that's required uh, to make sure that. Uh, uh, we're addressing all the needs that are out there, that it's a sustainable beach, that it has the proper vegetation. Um, and and uh, we also need the, the support of the DNR. I mean, they're the ones who issue the permit to restore this beach. And um, but we didn't really want to get them working on a project that we didn't know we had proper funding for either. So they're, they're busy down in Madison as well. So as the director said, the stadium board, 
um, today said, look, we will support the 60% portion of this grant, and then the coastal management grant would be the 40%, which is 80,000. Now that does add up to 200,000. I think you read 240, it was 120 from the stadium board. Uh, I think you may have, but so here we are uh, with $200,000. Now the 250 is uh, kind of a discussion number, and I think when, as uh, Director Kramer said, Patrick Engineering, which is our you know engineering uh, staff here at City Hall, um, Tentacle's pretty much all over, and that's a big company. Um, they have partnered with uh, Miller Engineering, and um, it's kind of like healthcare; they'll partner on the right thing, and they both have strengths that they can bring together. So we do not have a final price. I would love it to be two hundred thousand because then this is completely funded. If not, as, as uh, Director Kramer said, um, we would seek out other funds. But this is just for the study. This does nothing that you're going to drive by and say, oh man, am I glad they, they did that? Because that won't happen until probably March or April that we'll come back here with a plan. I want to address your comment. Patrick Engineering and Miller is very well aware of what you've put together in terms of a master plan. And anything we do will be in concert with that plan. So we're not duplicating anything. We took the study that uh, has been funded the last three years. So uh, you may say 200000 is a lot of money, but really it's not for what we're going to hopefully receive, and that's a, a, a you know direction from the DNR and an exact cost of what it's going to cost to really build this out. And, and I had made a comment, and I want, and I think you, you would agree with me, although I've learned to never speak for the council, but if we do this, we should do this right. I mean, beaches aren't the most competitive business in the world, but on the other hand, um, we we want something that is going to be sustainable, that uh, all ages are going to go and enjoy, and all um, the community is going to enjoy, but it's also going to be a, a, a little bit of a tourism, a tourism attraction as well. So we feel good. We like where we're at right now, and your acceptance of this grant, uh, your uh, authority for us to sit down with the coastal management grant people and then write this grant in November um, and then uh, allow us to maybe uh, look at some other sources of revenue once we get a final estimate from Patrick Engineering and Miller. Um, I think you'll give us plenty of work to do and then we'll be back to see you again um, February, March. Happy to update you along the process, but uh, this would be a priority for the city and it would, you know, these projects take time. You know? take sometimes a couple of years to do, but we like where we're at right now. We feel uh, like this is a tough project, but something that is a priority for uh, definitely us as administration, me as the mayor, and hopefully you as a park committee. Okay, do you feel that the uh, $250,000 uh, not to exceed is realistic for this portion of the study? I do, and again, uh, did Dr. Kramer really laid out what we what our expectations are in the study. Okay. We've been very open to the stadium board, they got the same uh, information that was just shared with you. Uh, uh, Patrick has that information, Miller has that information. Uh, it'll give us a comprehensive uh, plan uh, whether we can go ahead with this or not and what it would take to implement it. And um, Everybody asks how much is it going to cost. I, we don't know that unless that this is going to tell us. Do you have anything to share with us as to what this means dollar-wise to the city of Green Bay once this possibly comes to fruition and you actually have it? Right. right. Um, I, I, you know, we know it's going to have a positive impact. I mean, we, you know, we like beaches. I like beaches. I mean, there's people who go to Two Rivers and go out to Sturgeon Bay. And uh, but what we've got that no one else has is, is, is Bay Beach. You know, the pavilion and you know the, the rides that you've been so supportive of and. Um, you know, Brad Toll has assigned some numbers of an economic impact, you know, in the, you know, tens, you know, it's $59 million of economic impact, but um, I just think it's the right time to look at this project. I mean, you've done a great job, I think we've all done a great job of getting this city positioned pretty well right now from the downtown and some of the infrastructure <coughs> we've done. And I, I think this would be a, a fun project to work on, but this this is not without its challenges. Let me tell you, there's a lot of work to do here. You got the whole algae thing, and the scientists are going to weigh in on this. But I think this study is really going to get this uh, partnership formed with the city hall and with the DNR and uh, with the community. Great. 
Any further questions from the mayor? Brian, do you have something? No, I was going to say, I mean, this is really just the first step that was right. said. I mean, we have to understand a little bit more about the scope and size yeah. of what this would actually involve. And uh, I think this will cover that first phase, and we can mm -hmm. go from there. So okay. That would definitely be the purpose of the study, mm -hmm. to right. give us that information. Mark, did you want to weigh in? No, I, I like what I hear so far. Great. Okay. Sounds great. Fantastic. Well, go ahead and make the motion, then, to... Uh, uh, I was I was wondering if we should maybe ask is anybody on the floor who would care to come up and address us or have uh, anything to say on this particular item. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, man. You know how to swim? Mr. Carl wants it. Go ahead. Hold on. I would make the motion then to accept the hundred twenty thousand dollar donation from the stadium district and thank them very much for that. It's yes. very gracious and we're really appreciative of that. Uh, and then also to direct uh, staff to apply for the Wisconsin Coastal Management Grant $80,000 for the Phase 1 Feasibility Study for its Women Beach. Okay, we have a second. Second. Well, and two other things. Okay. 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 To authorize Patrick Engineering to proceed with producing the study once the funding becomes available and not to exceed $250,000 as part of the motion. That's Happy to add that. Okay. okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Polls? All right, that passes. Right. We're on our Good way. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you ma'am. Okay, back to number one discussion action on a request by Thurbent Financial, Tribe Tri Tri Financial, to donate 5000 towards the purchase of playground wood chips and provide volunteers to spread them on October 17th, 2015, at Navarino Park. Okay. Yeah. Thrivent contacted us about doing this community project. As you know, Thrivent has been a great community project partner with the Park and Rec Department. Usually every year they come up with trying to help us out with some project. They would cover about half the cost of the wood chips needed for the park, then the park department would cover the other half. This is for Navarino Park. As you know, in 2013, the park department received $20,000 of city funding to relocate that playground. Park staff has removed and restored the playground equipment and will install it to its new location in the park. Uh, our 20000 went towards restoring the old site, repairing, repower coating the playground equipment, replacing broken parts. We, added in, we had to add a drain tile and then, of course, purchasing the remaining $5,000 of wood chips. Uh, the date of the event will, the Thrivement will be working with the Neighborhood Association and to spread the wood chips and thrive it will also be providing food and water for the participants so um, we would certainly move to approve this project okay, discussion another generous yes, donation know. that's Indeed. awesome <laughs> move to approve it cody did Under you want to say anything oh. cody is here from thrive so no, unless there's questions no no thank you very much well, appreciate, appreciate, it. appreciate that that's fantastic um, the motion would be contingent upon hold harmless agreements being signed five thousand dollars of the wood chips being the responsibility of thrive it and all proper permits and insurance is being obtained. Second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that passes. All right. Good luck on the 17th, sir. Thank, Thank you again. You. You're good, Cody. Thank all you. Right. You won't Thanks. be there on the 17th? I've been to three already. <laughs> 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 We're on a roll. Got a rake you. Okay, uh, discussion and action number two. Discussion and action to approve additional funding for the replacement of the Baird Place Park Walkway staff. Okay, uh, I'll present this one. Uh, on, October, on August 12, 2015, the Park Committee approved hiring American Pavement Solutions to repave the walk at Baird Place for a cost not to exceed $20,000. We have a map in front of you which highlights the walk that we were going to replace. Uh, the scope of the work was to remove two inches of asphalt, recompact the gravel base, and place two inches of new asphalt on the top. Uh, the base bid was 16410 to remove it and place new asphalt. An additional $3,590 was approved if mineral gravel base was necessary. On September 14th, the contractor started the work uh, to remove the asphalt and two problems occurred. Uh, the thickness of the existing asphalt ranged from three to four inches instead of two inches, uh, which was what was anticipated. Uh, this adds to the amount of time to remove the asphalt and the amount of dispo disposal fees and trucking associated with it. So the contractor has asked for an additional $3,047.50 to do that. 
Um, and then in addition, uh, the gravel base, uh, it was determined that that base was extremely poor condition and we needed to be to over excavate the gravel in the base and replace it in full instead of doing minor repairs to it. Uh, when the project was poured out, there were no indications from the surface that this base work was faulty and needed to be redone. Uh, we did ask the Department of Public Works to come out and review the base and make a recommendation as to the appropriate fix. And their recommendation was that a third of the trail needed to be excavated down one foot and then we would add six inches of breaker run and six inches of new gravel uh, and then the two inches of asphalt. The remaining two-thirds of the trail needed to be over excavated down two feet in depth. Uh, the contractor would place a fabric down first and then 18 inches of breaker run and six inches of gravel. Uh, the contractor requested an additional $28,321.98 to complete this work. Uh, if the base is not stable when this work is done, the base work, we may have to add additional geogrid in between the two gravel layers. Uh, if needed, this geogrid will cost an additional several thousand dollars. Uh, staff would recommend that the Park Committee authorize the additional funding in the amount of $35,000 to fund these requested change orders. Plus, if that price would also include a 10% contingency to cover the cost of the geogrid if it's deemed necessary. Uh, the funding would come out of our park bond paving <coughs> account, which is the same account that or originally funded the project. And uh, staff would also request as part of this uh, process that the park committee authorize the contractor to proceed with this work ASAP instead of waiting for the additional funding to be approved at city council on October 6th. Uh, this walkway currently has been closed for two and a half weeks uh, because the asphalt has been removed. And this is probably the heaviest used walkway within the park system due to the proximity of the adjacent hospitals. Uh, we've already received several complaints from the public that this walk has been down so long. In addition, we'd like to take advantage of the nice weather that we're having. That's just going to make it a lot easier to repair the base work uh, now. Uh, I did check the extended forecast and there is rain in the forecast on October 7th and October 8th. Uh, the contractor did indicate that they can be out there next week Monday to begin this work if you authorize them to, to complete it uh, prior to the City Council approving the funding. So our motion would be to approve $35,000 of additional funding from the park bond paving account for the replacement of the walk at Baird Place and authorize staff to begin this work prior to council approval uh, if the additional, prior to council approval of the additional funding on October 6th. What authority do we have to change that methodology? The, the to change what? To make this change over and above the city council. Normally it goes through committee and then it goes to city council. Well, what gives us the authority to do this different? We could ask you to do that and then report it out to the council. Um, if we go out for bids on this, we thought about it. If we go out for bids on this, we don't think we're going to get a better deal than what we already did. We're in the mess on this one because of what we ran into. You know, as Dan said, we couldn't, we didn't have the foresight to see this, nor could we until mm. we dug the path up. Mm. So it's nobody's fault. But the other part of that is the paving season will end real quick here in November. If we don't move on this and get this in, we're looking at spring before this pathway gets in. And this, like Dan said, this is really a heavily used pathway. It's the walkway where all the employees go to their parking lots. It's the walkway where people come into the hospitals daily. And we have gotten a number of complaints saying, what are you doing here? Get moving on the path. If you, if you feel comfortable and you don't want to move it ahead, that's fine. Go ahead and, and do what you'd like to do with it. But just keep in mind that if we do that, we may not get that path in this year. We may be waiting for spring. What are the happen. repercussions from the city council, though? I, I just um, feel like we're putting the cart before the horse. And no, we are. Know. This is an exception. It's not the way we normally do business. Have we ever done anything like this before? Um, once in a while, we'll go to, we'll get permission to do this and talk to the chair of the committee mm. to bring this forward. As, you know, okay. we've done that in finance sometimes. So this is just coming as a uh, mm. request from this committee to city council, where we could be in the middle of doing the work already. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not comfortable, that's fine. But what, what, that is, what happens that's if they pull happens. it? You just drop what you're doing and do it, finish it in the spring then? Or? You wouldn't get it done. Probably by the time council meets, mm. the project would be nearly completed. 
it's right. about three days worth of work to do it. Yeah. Joel, this was originally funded with CDBG funding, mm -hmm. and uh, are there any funds from the CDBG still available after the donations from the Packers um, on the other project that was awarded this year? This, well, let me clarify. For Fireman's Park. Yeah, let me clarify. First of all, um, this was originally funded by CD uh, funding, right. uh, but then when we brought it forward, we changed the funding and we, we funded it out of bond, our bond paving account instead of using the CD funds. Did we do that through here? Uh, yes, we did. When we yes. approved the project, uh, we mentioned that that's where the funding was coming from. Uh, and then we reallocated the CD funds uh, to the tank splash pad because we were short. Right, on that okay. one. Uh, so that's what happened there. And then the other thing to note is when we quoted this out, it didn't. It was not required to have the same wage rates as a CD project would have. So it was not quoted using CD wage rates. So we would not be able to use CD funding uh, to complete these changes without so requoting the project out. I was just saying if there was a way to reimburse through CD funding in 2016 projects toward this, to reimburse the uh, additional payment fund, right, the additional cost. I would have to get a clarification from the planning department, but my guess would be no because we didn't use the wage rates when we created it out. Yeah, that kind of throws a in. From the uh, bond paving account, is there a surplus there because of other projects that have come in under, or do we have to reprioritize? We're going to reprioritize. I would also mention that the uh, cost very likely will be higher in spring when the demand is a lot higher okay. as well. It's impossible to get concrete and blacktop guys in spring. Here. They're both so far out. I think costs go up. And right now, I mean, like you said the weather is, is good. Like I said, these guys are in demand too, and they're on site. I don't have a problem approving this and moving forward, but you know, I can I can certainly see some discussion. On I don't want I don't want to start something. Mark Mark is kind of waving. Let's let's, let's see what Mark. Thank you, Sean. Um, all the all the person that kind of brought it up. I guess the concern I had was that okay, thirty five thousand in the bonding account would that affect something else? Some other would that. Like you said, you have to prior mm -hmm. that, is that the Yeah, but we're in the middle of a project that's open, so we can't leave the hole there and, and <laughs> leave it there for, it becomes a safety issue. Oh, yeah, so it would definitely take a higher priority mm -hmm. right now. Right now, the asphalt is out of there. If you drive by, it's gravel and right. piled up dirt in the middle of the park. But we have so enough. I mean, we, we can cover it. We're going to have to cover it. I mean, we're going to have to um, deal with this one. Okay. And the other concern I had about all the person was Visky brought it up was, uh, you know, if this contractor comes in on a Monday and we, we meet on Tuesday, you said it's like three days of work. I mean, if you started doing the work and for some reason council would deny it, I, I'm a little, just clarify that for me if the committee could, or let's just say something would happen. I, I don't foresee that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have the same concerns. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I may. It could rain yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way I would look at it is uh, twofold. One is you're right. I mean, they could say that we don't approve the additional use of the funds. We'd have to either mm -hmm. rebid the project if that was the request, or they would just simply say halt the project, which, again, I don't see the logic behind that. Right. What I think, though, how this does differ from some of the other funding needs that we have is this one isn't a piece of equipment that we you know, can theoretically mm -hmm. delay and still have access to the pricing. Also, this is a, a project that's you know in, in the middle of being completed. I think something else too is we're not reallocating funds, maybe from a different project, but not from a different source that we're trying to pull from the exact same account. So it's not that we're necessarily adding a new project that pulls from this, or we're not necessarily extracting other funds from the department to fulfill this, because we've done that in the past too, where we've had to pull funds from a different account just to satisfy some certain need. Because we're not doing that, or we're not making that shift, I, I'm not saying we're definitely within the rights to do that, but it it doesn't seem as if we're trying to be either unethical nor are we trying to be misleading. It is really just a matter of completing the project. I, I, I would feel comfortable with moving forward with this simply because, as Ms. Kramer mentioned, we're on site. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, I, I, I would hesitate. Maybe one thing we could do with this is, is have you just contact uh, uh, Mr. Dwayne, President Dwayne, mm -hmm. just to make sure he's aware of this too. Oh, that'd be good. Idea. Absolutely. You, you know, I would be okay with uh, uh, going ahead with this and that. 
you know, I don't see there's a lot of choice here. We can't really rebid a contract mm -hmm. in the middle of the work. Uh, and, uh, you know, if uh, our staff have reviewed the work that's needed and feel that the, that the uh, proposed amount is uh, reasonable, is acceptable, uh, you know, I, I th I'm okay with that. I guess the, the only thing I'd want to be sure of is that we as a committee have the authority to do that. I'm not sure that if we do or not. You know, I've only been on the committee for a year, so you know, I, I'd be okay making a motion to approve the additional 35000 from the park bond paving account, uh, but with the stipulation that uh, we uh, we make sure we, we check with the attorney to make sure check the legal aspects that the committee yeah. has the authority. That was to my concern. I can hang my hat on the safety thing though too. I'm just saying, well, this is a safety measure basically, and it's pushes pushes the red. Yeah, well, oh, I'm making sure. Uh, council would still have to approve that. I mean, it's still. I mean, We'd I, I still have to report out. To What's that? We just, We'd you still you would just have to report out. So, if you make a determination tonight, that is the binding determination. Our intention here was just to lay out the options and tell you that if we don't do it this way, we may do have delays, we may not get the project done, and then we'll have to put up with that. That is, And it may come in as Alderman Moore stated, more expensive than the spring, but it's going to sit there if we don't get it done. So um, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, we're good with, but those are the options. I think from the safety aspect of it, uh, I'll just keep bringing that up and say that uh, it warrants making a different decision than we're used to making and uh, I don't know, I, I kind of feel also that we have, to have pretty much of a backing from the great majority of the city council and uh, I, I just don't see us running into that many problems based on that. So I, I don't see it being a problem but you know it's just one of those things where yeah. it, it's kind of a time crunch and I understand that and sometimes other committees are allowed like our PNW committee mm -hmm. we're allowed to make a determination for someone so yeah. I, I think you know, I think in that uh, in that light, then I, I would be, I would be okay with that. In theory, too, even though um, there is the po possibility that the work could be done by. <laughs> <laughs> I like how y'all, y'all the, the, the mayor. That's got, that's got to be Tom Dwayne because nobody ever calls me on this telephone. I just have to put it in my pocket. The mayor. Nice music. I like that. It's very yeah. moving. I think you just hung up on him. Yeah. No. Good. <laughs> Maybe he's just going to call back. You may, may just be aware I'll that. I'll turn it off. All I, was, all I was going to say is I that use it. If, if the work does <laughs> get done, uh, I think that may put us in a sticky wicket. But I, I like Mr. Dunning's suggestion of you know, just confirming with the attorney that we have the authority to do so. But to your point, Mr. Stoyer, if uh, for some reason somebody does not feel this is adequate use of the funding and they want to try and pull it, they're entitled to do so, and then that leaves us actually in the same spot they we would have been had we not. So, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, the mayor and the council president can approve things, uh, you know, if they're necessary on a short term basis. Uh, you know, I, I don't really know what the proper procedure is here, and you know, I just don't want somebody saying we overstepped our no. authority. But, yes. I mean, like you mentioned that you would be uh, talking to Mr. Chairman uh, Dwayne about it, and he could get the word out to us before council. Sure. So I, I'm okay. I'm fine with that as well. I think that's probably the best way to make sure all parties are engaged and understand the circumstances. Ms. Kramer, would you agree on that now? Yes. All right. All right uh, can we get a motion. Take action. I guess I'd make the motion then to. Uh, approve the additional funding from the uh, bond pavement account for the 30, I'm sorry, $35,000 is what you said? Correct. Right? Correct. Um, for completion of the project to begin immediately uh, with guidance to staff to please. Contingent upon con yes, legal. Legal and uh, reaching out to President Dwayne. Uh, a little wordy, but did you guys get the motion originally? Uh, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Sir. Could uh, friendly amendment uh, based on the fact of the urgency of completing the job and safety reasons? That's why we are taking this sure, action. We can I don't want to start a landslide of this happening in other communities. No, no, no. I think I think that's legitimate. Uh, yeah. Truth of it is, there are four of us on the committee: Mark, 
yeah. it makes it five. Yeah. If we check with the council president, that's six. So we've got at least half of the council there. Mr. Moore, you seem perplexed. Yeah, I don't know that I would count votes. <laughs> yeah. But I know I know what you're saying. No, I just okay. I, I'm just looking at. Okay, the we have a motion and a second to uh, go ahead and uh, report it out to city council right? with that motion. Staff, you okay with that? Do you have something to add? Or? I'm okay all if right. you're okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Polls, all right. Passes. I'll, I'll take the on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so why I hope you're. Okay, um, 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 number four, discussion and action of Park and Recreation and Forestry Department 2016 budget. Okay, here we are. Back at the budget season already. Well, it went fast, didn't it? Yes, it did. Remember the aggravation just seemed like yesterday. <laughs> All right, as you know, the Park Rec Forestry budget yeah. is responsible for nine divisions. Bay Beach is its own fund and not included in the 101 fund. The other remaining eight divisions are City Hall. Yeah, excuse me, I'm not sorry. Nope, know. I don't. Administration. Well, this is not the kind of yeah. Triangle, Triangle Recreation, Parks, Pools, Forestry, and the Wildlife. This is the line item piece that yep. yeah. we're doing yet. Okay. Okay. There's nothing casting no. All right. Our 2000 budget expense, 2015 budget expense, was $8,192,750. Our proposed 2016 budget expense is $8,442,121. This is an increase of 249371 Of that total, 190241 is the salary and benefits increase, the 2% that's being proposed. Um, we were up $203,984 in those salary lines. Of that, we were down 13243 in benefits, which gave us that amount of $190,241. Regarding seasonal salaries, which is part of this whole package, I'm going to give you a little bit of a story here because I don't think this is well known, but we have not given an increase to the group of seasonal salary employees since 2008. The positions we're talking about here are like cashiers, attendants, our football officials, our lifeguards, our employees at Bay Beach and the Wildlife Sanctuary that work the summer jobs, our sports supervisors, lifeguard pool directors, swim instructors, and program instructors. There are seven pay grades that we use for a seasonal pay plan. The wages range from like $7.55 an hour to $11 per hour. Uh, officials are paid at $15 to $17 per game. Wages of city of our city seasonal positions have fallen way, way behind the, our surrounding communities uh, with similar positions. As a result, we are experiencing significant turnover and shortages in staffing these positions. We need to remain competitive in the area to attract some of these qualified individuals. We've not been able to retain individuals who choose to job hop to other communities for a quarter more an hour even some on nickel more an hour. This past summer we had a really hard time with lifeguards, trying to find enough lifeguards to staff our pools. They were hopping for the changes in lifeguards alone were 50 cents to a dollar per hour regarding their level of, of experience and how many years that they've worked for us. Um, also, our neighboring communities are paying for lifeguard certifications to staff lifeguards and we have not done that as well. Um, other positions we struggled for were the Bay Beach attendants, officials, and program instructors. We are recommending in that $190,000, that's part of that package as well, a 75 cent pay increase per step. We know that our community um, partners right now are recommending a dollar, and we're already behind them for this year. So we looked at the possibility of doing 50 cents and felt that wouldn't be enough. That's not even a touch <coughs> problem. We looked at doing a dollar, but really, we don't think we can cover a dollar all, all in one year. We're looking at maybe doing 75 cents this year and bringing back a second phase next year to try to soften the blow for the budget. Uh, you need to also under keep in mind that revenue is collected for these programs. So part of the revenue will offset some of the cost of this increase. We strive to recover 100% of our direct costs for adult programs and 50% for children's programs. 
let's give you a perspective here of how many seasonal employees we're talking that the city of Green Bay hires. This past year, we've hired 1,092 positions. That's more than the whole entire workforce of the city of Green Bay. I don't think people realize that the park department hires, trains, and staffs those many people. Baby Chalone, we hire 195. Triangle, 41. Office, we have two clerical people. Parks, we hire 22 SMEs. Forestry, we hire 10. Wildlife Sanctuary, we hire three SMEs and 21 seasonals. In Recreation and Pools, we've hired 802 hmm. staff members. So you can see that it's a lot of work because not only are you hiring, you're scheduling, you're supervising these people, and there's a lot of job hopping and switch changes of shifts and to accommodate young people's schedules. So we're looking at that proposal and we're hoping that that goes through because we really need that to be competitive in order to keep our jobs staffed. Along with that, our department also supervises and recruits and works with and trains volunteers. Last year our department worked with 1,267 volunteers. So we're doing a lot of HR work to staff programs in Park and Rec. Now, if we were at the number of 190,241 salary benefits, which leaves us 59,130, where is that rest of the money? In the area of utilities, electricity went up 4% in regular 9% for government lots. Natural gas went up 2%. Water went up 5%. Sewer went up 12%. Mm -hmm. Propane stayed at its rate. So what that meant to us as a department, our, our utilities alone just for those costs, if we stayed at the same level and the same usage, would increase our budget $12,390. Also in the area of department insurance, we were hit with a $27,070 increase. That is general liability went from $22,000 to $28,000 and property casualty went from um, 37,000 to 58,520. Those, those figures are given to us through finance. Those are figures that we touch that are proposed <coughs> to be added to our budget. The, between the two of those, you know, that's 27 and 12. So, you know, that's where the money went. That left us with $19,670 that our budget went up. And that went to Arnaldi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I told you Baby Beach wasn't in that budget. It isn't in this budget, so you're good. But um, that's all our budget. Oh, he donates this time, doesn't he? <laughs> I have two comments, two questions. Mm -hmm. I guess the chair, if I can. Yeah, go. You want to take questions as you go, or you want to finish? It's up to you guys. I can do it either way. You, you can keep going, and I can okay. address my hands. So, really, without these are costs that we don't have any control over. These are costs mm -hmm. that we have to put in our budget. The $19,670 is remaining is what this budget went up. And I'll just go briefly through this for you. Um, what we call our 52s, which are employee expenses. We went up $590. And um, this is for eight different division conference fees and membership fees. So it's really not a whole lot when you divide it up into eight divisions. Our dues and bonds, these are the certifications of our AFO, our, our plumber license, stuff like that. That went up uh, $430. Our record checks, these are employee background checks, $150. Our employee med, spend, med expense went down $170. Our laundry went up $780. This is, the, our laundry contract is the same contract the whole city uses. So again, this is a, a rate that's given to us as well and through all departments. Um, in the area of services, our contractual service, we cut $3,800. Um, to try to soften the blow of some of these increases. Sorry, how much you cut? 3,800. Okay. And one, one of the reasons we could cut some of this is we did get a grant to do some of the spraying for Phragmites. So that helped us get rid of some of that. And we ended up cutting two recreation contractual classes that didn't go as well. So those were the cuts for the 3,800. In the copy machine, we went down 40. Advertising, we, this is our one-time spring summer brochure that advertises all our programs. The cost of printing went up $60. Our license and permits, we got one drain permit that went down for $30. I mean, this is our budget. We're looking at $30 and $10 cuts here. But our credit card fees went up $1,470. And that's because more people are using credit cards to process it, and we have to pay those credit card fees. In material and supplies, um, in that area, we went up 5280 Now, what did we go up in? Where were those areas? In parks? We went up 
yeah, two thousand twenty dollars. This is for a hundred or a thousand dollars worth of turfus. And you know those two those big uh, brown park signs that we have that advertise the park. We have two of those that are completely rotted out. We have got to redo those. So that was another one thousand twenty dollars to replace both of those. In the wildlife sanctuary, we went up one thousand eight hundred and forty. That is for medical supplies for the animals. Our meat eaters continues to go up. That's the cost of food. Meat eaters like rat chicks and everything that we feed the animals. So the cost of that food went up as long as cleaning supplies have gone up. As the beach has grown, the wildlife sanctuary has grown. And we've had more visitors there. And that means more toilet paper, more garbage bags to accommodate that. Forestry, we went up $1,030. And this is for $700 for um, tree stakes. They're a dollar a piece, but we need 700 of them. And these are for the new plantings of the EABs. We need to have those trees stake. The other $330 in there was for three safety helmets. We have to update our safety helmets. They're not compliant anymore, so we had to add $330 to do that. In the area of pools, we went up $390, and this is for the lifeguard pack supplies the mouthpieces that we use on saves um, and supplies. Office supplies were the same. Our housekeeping, we went down 70. Our books and maps went up $90. This was the increase in the Press Gazette and the American Nursery Journal. Uh, tools and shop supplies remain the same. Uh, here we go with sand and gravel. Sand and gravel, we went up 4,280. Again, we went up 3,280 and in dirt to fill tree holes. We don't have the dirt, you can't fill the tree holes. You're going to have a hole in front of somebody's yard. So in order to, with all the trees that we had to take out this year, we're way behind. I mean, we're big barn and trying to find somewhere to get dirt, extra dirt, just to fill in holes in front of houses right now. In the parks, um, we also are using, adding a thousand dollars for our building projects for turfus. This is black dirt that we need to fill in when we do these playground projects. When we do other park projects, we have to go and fill in holes in park areas. We don't have enough dirt. So that's what we're looking for for that increase. In the areas of our 54s, uh, paint remained the same. Concessions went up 910, and this was in $70 in Triangle and 900 in Pools. But remember, we don't buy concessions unless we make the revenue. So this will be offset with revenue. We only buy the amount of concessions that we know we're going to sell. So that is the need that that concession has put forward. And horticultural supplies, in the area of the wildlife sanctuary, we added $1,000, but then we went back in the wildlife sanctuary and cut $1,000 out of chemicals to balance that out. And we just felt that we needed to just put a little more emphasis in horticulture versus chemicals. So we tried to take from one and make it up with the other. The awards remain the same. In equipment repairs, we are up uh, $400, and this is TSA, this is Triangle, this is our new lift. This is parts for the new lift that I got to put into that area last year. Playground uh, equipment repairs, we went up $3,840. This is due to wood chips. Our semi-load of wood chips for all of our playground areas, they went up $200 per load. So we are looking at um, $2,760 of that cost would be wood chips. And the 1,080 that remains is three bike racks. The equipment rentals, we went up $700, and these are dumpsters. So we had to add a dumpster to the Coburn Park area and to the park shop. We need an additional dumpster for garbage to be picked up, and we ordered four additional water portable toilets to cover areas that we need them in. Our city equipment usage is up um, 2,280. This is where we do all of our gas, our diesel fuel, our welding, our oil and lube filters, all of our parts for a small engine, grass cutters, that all comes out of that repair. And we definitely need that money to keep our equipment working for our crews. Building repairs, we went up uh, $2,400. And where we went up is that triangle, $400. We need to do some shingle repair on the tow shed uh, roofs. In pools, we need to replace um, $1,500 worth of gutters at Joanne's. Those are those big gutters that are on the line. They're cracked, and when people step down on them, they crack and go into the gutter. So we definitely need to replace that. That's a safety issue. In City Hall, we look for about $500 in plumbing supplies, which we need badly here. 
Um, property rentals is the same. That's what we pay the school district. Our payment and sidewalk repair, here's one that we're never going to get caught up on, but we're trying right now. We have 987 sidewalk cakes that need to be repaired right now in our park system. Every year we try to do as many as we can. If we raise it $2,000, we will be able to do 15 of those, 987. And these are the 15 worst ones that we need to do for safety reasons, so we have to add that in. So that's kind of where the $19,000 came from in, in those areas. Um, you know, we did bond, you know, you're thinking, well, what are we going to do with the project list? Well, the project list, you know what that is, and we have bonded, and you're well aware of what our bonding request was, and we will be doing the replacing, you know, of those projects that we talked about for the bonding list in athletic fields, in property acquisition, for matching dollars for grants and playgrounds and special facilities that we went through. I also want to bring up that in the Park and Rec Department this year, $1,566,000 was received from grants and donations on which we used for projects that we brought forward to you. And that was projects that were over $5,000 <coughs> and also 23 projects under $5,000 that were also completed that are not in that total. In the area of equipment replacement, we are looking, we are proposal, um, our 2015 request was 494000 This year we are requesting lower 492300 which is actually down $1,750. In the area of revenue, we're down 18940 We're down $15,000 in pools. And let me explain this one. Since 2007, when we did our revenue, when we built Rush Pool, those, those revenue projections are so out of whack. Every year, I start out in the hole in pools. I'll give you a three-year scenario so you can know what I'm talking about. In 2012, we projected $349,930. We actually made $316. We were down 33,000. In 13, we projected 348,970. We made 298. We were down 50,000 dollars. In 14, we we projected 342,460. We were down 67,000 dollars, which av which comes out to 151,175, which means we're out of whack in revenue, about 50,000 dollars a year going into our our pools. So we're looking to drop that to make it more of a realistic number in stages so we're not taking a big hit as much. So we're, we're looking to drop that. And the other revenue was down at Forest Street. Uh, we were down $220 in the purchase of Arbor Day trees and some entry replacement in revenue. So in fees and charges, the only thing that we asked for this year is we left the child, adult, and senior passes alone. We're looking to raise swim passes $5. We're looking to raise pool emissions from 250 to 275, which would be a quarter for child and a quarter for adult and seniors as well. This increase isn't going to make us a whole lot of money. You know, we project not even making probably 12 to 13 thousand dollars by doing this. It's certainly in line because we're still well behind other communities in charges of those pools. Other than that, all fees and charges will remain the same on our whole fees and charge schedule. So as you can see, that's a uh, pretty neat proposal. And that's a quick scenario on uh, where we're heading in with projected budget. Are there any questions so, I can answer for you? Thanks, Chair. Just a uh, commentary more than questions, but uh, first is the seasonal employee raises. I mean, a dollar was discussed, but obviously that's a pretty big hit on a thousand, mm -hmm. almost 1,100 employees. But it seems more feasible to me that you would offer maybe a 50 cent in year one and a 75 mm -hmm. cent in year two to those employees <coughs> that come back because now you've got a trained employee that's coming back the second year and there's a lot more incentive for them to come back well uh, new hires would be at that original 50 cent rate let me explain that in each one of those steps there is that there's step one through four okay so the incentive was for instance if i'm a cashier my very first year i make it seven dollars and 55 cents an hour okay if i come back the second year i make it seven dollars and 80 cents the third year, I'm making eight dollars and twelve cents. So that is already in, instituted into that plan. Maybe they just need to be looked at with those rates and those increases a little bit more than a. I don't know. I just uh, a flat raise across the board just doesn't. I don't know. 
Did, did I hear correctly that since. there has been no increase since 2008? That's correct. So yeah. eight years, mm -hmm. and we're giving them a 75 cent increase, which for the people at the entry level, it's 10%, but the people at the higher uh, steps, it's uh, less than that. Correct. Uh, right. Uh, I, I think that certainly is justified. Uh, in fact, more is probably justified. But could, uh, for, for the purpose of our review of the budget, could we get a copy of the seasonal salary plan? Absolutely. Uh, so we can look at that before mm -hmm. the budget. Sure. My uh, next comment was uh, with uh, Triangle. Uh, Triangle's a county park, isn't it? No. We run Triangle Ski. They own the land, but we run the park. Okay, so there's no financial input from Brown County on that? That's yes, every year they, they give us $18,000 okay. towards the running, but that doesn't cover any hardly any of the costs. We do all the maintenance out there. We do all the staffing out there, all the hiring out there. And we get all the revenues long. from? Correct. Okay. All year long. Okay, uh, and then the uh, school district, um, the school district shares on the parks um, for payments, is, is that something that needs to be looked at again and maybe renegotiated also? It's something that we always are trying to negotiate with the schools. Right now we're in the process where we had this agreement where we subsidized it by 40000 The park department's kind of thrown into this whole massive city agreement that includes crossing guards and everybody else. We're trying okay. to get the park and rec piece out. And we're looking at what are they really using of ours and what are we using of theirs. And it's something that's in negotiations as we speak. It is. Okay, so that was my next we're question. We're talking is about it, but I don't Talking know about it, but are we actually yeah. taking any action on it? That right. would be the next thing to follow up on that. It's definitely one of our goals to follow up throughout the year. Okay, and then just the last part of here, um, talking about dirt and wood chips. Um, kind of wondering what the accessibility to those items might be through our yard waste centers if it could be purchased for a reduced price from our public works department mm -hmm. be a source of revenue for them be a savings on our budget on this end or you know use the share the wood chips that they have to be a specialty wood chip for playground requirements they're not one they're not the wood chips yeah. that we have at the wood yard okay that is required by law in the state of Wisconsin dirt for uh, filling tree holes yeah I mean, is that something that's available through I don't know if DPW has any dirt that is available. I know we don't have it, so. Uh, possibilities I'd like to bring up. Uh, mental hospitals, are any available there? Uh, any available for the water company's building? Uh, anything available from Lambeau development? Anything available from the highways? Airport was talking about maybe making some adjustments or additions. Could we possibly contact those entities to get more Anytime there? we know a building project's going on, we contact them okay. and say, do you have any extra dirt you want to give us, please give it to us. Mm -hmm. And we've been we've been fortunate. We've gotten some. Okay. Well, and also I, I understand. They, they, they dredging us, they could do. Mm -hmm. I think they did. <laughs> Is the, uh, at, at budget last year, the council added money for the Emerald Ash Borer, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, including staff mm -hmm. to handle that, is that in there? Uh, I got a good report on that. I'm happy with our forestry crew. They have done a really great job. This year we treated 7,500 EAV trees mm -hmm. already. Um, we have, uh, all the stumps on the east side, we have <coughs> caught up on. We have 150 left on the west side. So what you gave us and helped us with really made a difference in that area, as long with along as well as our staff. You know, I put the challenge out there and said, hey, you know, you just can't hold your hand out and say, give me the money, you got to produce. And you know, they took it up and they did a wonderful job. Now we're still cutting down more trees, so we're still going to add more stumps as we cut down. But they have done a tremendous job on catching up on that problem, as a result of helping us out. So in terms of the treating the mm -hmm. trees, we, we have money in next year's budget? Yes, we do. Continue. We have the same amount that we had. We didn't increase it. It was just the same amount. Okay, thank you. Mark, did you have something else? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just following up with all the person more so about the dirt. You know, I, I was, I'd like to understand why we couldn't use some of the dirt that is at, that are at the drop-off centers. I mean, can we I don't know if it's the quality that we can put in the yard. You know, it's full of weeds. We get a lot of complaint if All we right. use that, that the weeds come up and right. put weeds in the terrace. But it's well, something anyway, that I can saying, certainly talk with. I'm just looking with. for other alternatives. Right. I follow what he said right. about that. 
One other thing, you were talking about the thousand or so support staff uh, that we hire through the park department. And you know, I hear, you know, different divisions of your office or of your department that, you know, like people say, we, we might need more foresters, you know, to keep up with everything that's out there. What percentage of effectiveness is realized, you know, with some of these workers? You, know, you said you have 10, for example, in forestry. Mm -hmm. What, you know, and I don't know if you can put a number on that, but how, how effective are they working along with your regular forestry staff uh, to get the job are done? Are you talking about the summer SMEs? Yeah, the People, summer home. Very effective. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. It has a major impact. Our summer help helps us a lot. Right, and I, I mean, as, as budget comes up, you know, I mean, I, I'm always looking at ways to be more efficient, and I'm just wondering if that, that there's still gaps, I'm, I'm sure. It's mm -hmm. not perfect, but right. and I don't know if there's there a number or some kind of percentage you can put on that, or you just say it's just very effective. I would have to look at it. Yeah. I don't want to just give you a number right. off the cuff without really taking a look at it. Okay. Um, all right, that's it for now. Thank you. Uh, I had a couple items. Of committee, you have anything on this? I mean, I just want to hit on a couple things here, uh, like your sidewalk kicks. Can we work out something, project, uh, projects where we actually hire uh, that type of work for the city to... That's they, what we do. We and hire you they ask them to donate them. <laughs> we, have, we have done that sure. in the past as well. Okay. Um, pool expenses, uh, you said the, no, pool sell like just a losing deal. Um, Pools are money making. Pools we always have to subsidize. Yeah. They and don't make 100% uh, of the cost. Just a question I would have, of course, the Colburn Pool, is there in a, or are we supporting that next year? Is that your budget? I left the money out? for the Colburn Pool to operate Colburn Pool in this existing budget for another year. So it's in there for another year? Yes. Okay, because I don't know if we made that decision yet or not. It's an, uh, I propose I it to remember. be in the budget. Oh, yes. okay. All right, so now it's proposed. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all I had. Uh, anybody? I said one last question. I mean, yes, Mr. Right. Moore's already brought up the thing about the uh, uh, wage increase, but uh, I know one of the challenges we've had the last few years, and we've addressed this by increasing the budget a little bit, has been on the forestry mm -hmm. staff itself. I mean, I know you guys have been working very hard on that and very diligently, but it still seems like we're we're falling behind on that. We're on year. about an eight-year rotation. We tried to. We were on nine. We're trying to get down. I don't know. I, I, I have. T I have ten foresters. Sure, I have sure. six forester. Two positions mm -hmm. and four forestry ones. They handle over thirty-five thousand trees. So if you figure that out, and you know, for planting season and cutting season, um, that's our rotation. The only reason I ask on that, though, is have we thought about some additional support staff or temporary staff to try and just fill that void? And I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's a long-term solution. I am suggesting maybe just as a way to catch up a little bit on some of the backlog that we've had, and then returning to what I'll call our normal staffing level. I'm, mm -hmm. Again, I'm not suggesting hiring people, firing people, but through this attrition. does, pardon me? Maybe through attrition. Attrition, but mm -hmm. perhaps, all I'm saying is it seems like that is a specific area that we've struggled with mm -hmm. historically, and that's, again, not a reflection on the staff, I'm just no. merely the workload. I don't know what the committee feels about that, but um, I, I guess if that's an area you could at least examine, too, from a budget perspective, sure. I'd appreciate that. I know, Mr. Moore, that's been a concern of yours, too. So. I, for one, would uh, look at probably putting more in there. I don't care if the budget goes up a little bit or not, but we got to do something about getting on that uh, one year. And, uh, well, and, and that's the thing is we're, we're trying to catch up on it. It just seems like we're, we're not quite getting <coughs> over that hurdle. And uh, if we I can think we've made progress there. We've made progress. Made progress. I, I, would, I would concur. I'm not at all. This isn't meant to be mm -hmm. critical. It's just no, more no. actually as a way yeah. of trying to catch up yeah. on it. So that's all I had. Okay. Mark? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I concur with all of the answers around that as well. Uh, it's just that, you know, the citizens that I've talked to in my district, um, I think what happens with, with, with forestry is um, you can keep up, you can do some things, but if you have a storm, let's say, you know, that, that can throw the crews off by a week, two weeks, you know. And so what I'm saying is a backlog if there's storms. And we've had a number of those this year. So with that all being said, you know, you can't plan for that. But the forestry division is definitely something that I, I personally am looking at, and I hope that as budget time comes up. Okay, uh, I'd like to move ahead if we possibly could. We'll kind of have a motion are you looking for? Okay. I'll we'll make that motion to uh, receive and place on file the proposed budget. For All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that, that passes. Mr. Nenning seconded that just so I'm sure. Oh, okay. 
Um, director's report. Okay, the walk for wildlife was held last weekend, which is success. Fourteen thousand five hundred dollars was raised for our wildlife rehab program, uh, which is four thousand five hundred dollars more than last year. We had four hundred ninety-five walkers, seventy-seven volunteers. I'd like to uh, give a special thank and shout out to Matt, Jody, and Lori from our staff for producing such an awesome event. Speaking of awesome events, Drum Fest was held at Bay Beach Amusement Park. This was consisted of drum lines from um, all of our high schools as well as individual talents on displays of drummer. There were seven competitive areas at the areas that were held at the beach. We had a lot of spectators and a lot of applause. It was really a nice competition. Um, people really liked the event and they would like us to run it again next year. I just told you this summer we treated 7,500 trees for Animal Ash Boar with our prevention program. We had two successful playground bills, as you know, one at Firemen's and one at uh, JFK, mm -hmm. produced by Humana, the Packers, and the ladies of Lambeau. We've been getting a lot of nice compliments on the playground pieces that were put in at both areas, so we're happy about that. On September 15th, the Preble Optimist Group sponsored a night at Bay Beach for children with special needs. We had over 100 children attend that event and participated, and it was sponsored and paid for by the Preble Optimist. The families were very appreciative of this event, and um, we want to give a, a thank you to the Preble Optimist for helping us out with that event as well. A contractor has been hired, and work should begin on Tank Splash Winning Pool within the next week here. Um, this past weekend, we had the Bellin Half Marathon that was held at Bay Beach. Uh, Sean Ryan and his group did an awesome job of running this event, but I want to say we had a couple issues with parking and backups and space. There really was not enough space when we're open to run this event. So our plan moving forward that if we bring the Bellin back, which I think everybody wants to happen, and we're all, con all considering that, it has to be on a weekend when Bay Beach isn't open. We're looking at about the second weekend of October to accommodate that. I think it would be work out better for the race itself. They need more space. We can't give them more space when we're open. And um, I think it would help everybody to accommodate them. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. All right. Move to receive place and file director's report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One more thing on the half marathon. It was run very, very well. Uh, and my hat's off to the staff at Bay Beach for handling and doing everything they did. Uh, had the opportunity to go down there to the finish line and just walk around there, and I'm always amazed at what a tight ship you guys run there. And uh, the place was really, we were in top shape, and everybody was really proud of us. And uh, I think the answer to run this marathon uh, next year on the, uh, I think they had a date already projected, which was the week after we closed. Okay. That would I be can't good. remember what the date was, but I think we should uh, correspond with them as to what that date should be because they've already posted a date. So I think that's a definite answer. I will have Jason contact Mr. Yeah. Ryan and make sure that date is set. And uh, along with that, would you please have them contact me? I've got some uh, items for improvement that I don't know mm -hmm. who to contact over there. Sure. Thank you. All right. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, All right. Second item. Oh, okay. All right. All right, we're going to transition. Oh, let me stop this here. We'll transition to the uh, INS uh, Improvement Service Committee meeting right now. Give us about uh, three minutes. Mr. Zimma, you're here obviously for item number uh, nine, right? Yeah, that's